Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Ethereum, and we're gonna be looking at the same corridor that we've been looking at for Bitcoin in the past. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So, this corridor is something we have followed extensively for Bitcoin over the last few months. Uh, you know, I created it back over here in, in April or March, I can't remember exactly when it was, but I think it was maybe around April or so. And since then, you know, I didn't really know how it would perform uh, because again, I, I created it somewhere over here. And, and since I created it, we have not been back up to the top of the corridor for Bitcoin, but we did go down to the bottom, okay? And, and we actually bounced off of that range. Now, what's interesting is, you know, you can, you can look at the same metric on a lot of other different assets. And it, it does more or less tell a, a similar type of story, okay? So for Ethereum, if you go back and look at the history, one of the things you'll notice is that whenever, whenever it reaches above the red line, right, the upper line, which is sort of the, the upper limit to what is theoretically possible based on historical data and assuming diminishing volatility, okay? So anytime we hit it, we typically we either ride that line for a while, but we don't typically go past it, okay? So it's not something you can say, well, the minute we hit it, we have to go down. But what it does show is that anytime we do hit it, it, it seems like we either have to cool off for a few weeks, these are weekly candles, or we just slowly ride up that line. But we don't really see any major breakouts to the upside, right? We don't ever see it, you know, coming up here and then, and then continuing on like that, or we don't see it doing anything like this or even here we didn't see it you know continuing on higher and and the corridor doing something different so but again the corridor is a function it it, it it is a derivative more or less of the price so i mean it would make sense to some degree but i think it's interesting because it, it can at least show you when the market is getting really relatively overheated and it can also maybe bring your your short-term price predictions back down to earth for instance you know if you were over here in june of 2017 saying that bitcoin or sorry, saying that Ethereum was gonna to go to, I don't know, like $2,000 within a couple of weeks, um, you know, you can argue that this corridor would say, oh, probably not, right? It's probably not gonna be able to go up that fast, uh, but that given enough time, we could reach those levels and eventually we did hit $2,000. So, you know, and then in the bear market, you'll see it more or less ride that, ride that line down. But what's interesting is if you look over the macro scale here, even in this cycle, Ethereum, once again, it hit that red line over here and, and rode it to the top, the local top, came back down and then came up once again and hit it, hit it at the top. Now, I think the more important aspect of this indicator for today is well, where is it today? You know, are we at a top? Are we at a bottom? Where are we? Well, according to this metric, we're kind of in between, okay? So I don't think you can look at this metric and, and claim that we're at an obvious top. I don't think you can look at the metric and claim that we're at an obvious bottom. You can see we're more or less in between uh, when you think about it on a logarithmic scale, okay? Because to get to the bottom, or sorry, from the bottom to where we are today, it's about an 80% move to the upside. But then where we are today to the top, it's about a 100% move to the upside, okay? So I guess we should maybe measure this down rather than up. But what you can see is that it ranges right now from 2390 up to $9,089. So we're more or less in the middle of the range when you think about it on a logarithmic scale. We're about double, uh, not quite double from, from the bottom of the, of the range, but we're also not even half of, of the top of the range, okay? Another thing to note is that during the last cycle, we tested these bounds on more than one occasion. I mean, in fact, really three separate occasions over here, over here, and then over here. So far this cycle, we tested it here, and then you could theoretically argue that this maybe was a second test or part of the same test. But regardless, I, I still remain steadfast with the idea that the cycle should theoretically lengthen and, and we still have a ways to go. I think the reason why this, this market is throwing a lot of people off is just because so many people think that it's a four year cycle and that you know, you have to have a parabolic rally in, in the end of the year or in January. Um, otherwise, otherwise, you know, that's it. Or it just doesn't make sense because people, so many people are calling for, you know, 10K, 15K ETH by the end of the year. And I mean, 
really likely not going to happen, right? Um, but look, I mean, right now, what I would say for Ethereum, it, it seems like we're in, in a long reaccumulation phase. And I know that sounds boring because we've been saying it for the last like eight months or so, right? I mean, um, clearly over here, we were overheated. You get that final push at the end of a local top. And we did think this is going to be a double, at the very least, a double peak cycle for Bitcoin. So today, what's interesting is even the current prices, which a lot of people are, are feeling somewhat bearish on, we're actually above the prior weekly close all time high from May. So it's interesting how, how what was once sort of seen as a FOMO price now is sort of seen as somewhat of a fearful price, maybe maybe more middle of the line. I imagine a, a truly fearful price, you know, would be would be further down than where we are today. But that doesn't mean we have to go to those levels. OK, I mean, Ethereum is still holding up relatively strong given the circumstances. I mean, it's not that far down from the prior all time high. Um, so I still think Ethereum looks incredibly strong. Another one you can look at this on is actually the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation. I think it looks somewhat interesting as well. The same metric. But what you notice is that upper line seems to govern more or less what is what is theoretically possible. OK, and we haven't even made it there yet. Um, this cycle. I don't know if we're going to. I really don't. Uh, we got close to it right here, but we're nowhere near that point at the current time. And in fact, really, it's just a long uptrend, which is what we speculated it would be back in 2019. We we drew these lines and we said, look, guys, it's just going to be it's more than likely going to be a very long uptrend for the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation. There's going to be seasonality that, you know, sometimes Ethereum gives some back to Bitcoin. And then and then Bitcoin gives gains back to Ethereum. But over the macro scale for the duration of a market cycle, which I think is a lengthened cycle, I would expect the Ethereum valuation against Bitcoin to continue to slowly trend up with time. And really, that's like the best case scenario, I think. If, if it gets too overheated like this, then you, you normally get these major pullbacks. And, you know, I see some people say, well, if something drops 80 percent against something else and that, that that coin must be dead. Look, Ethereum dropped 80% against Bitcoin twice during the last market cycle, okay? 80% or more on two separate occasions. And it did not stop it from continuing on. So, I mean, so far this cycle, we haven't even seen an 80% drop of the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation. But you could also argue one of the reasons is because we also haven't seen really a parabolic rally like we saw over here. I mean, you look at these these increases. I mean, this was like 1800% over just a few months. Over the entire market cycle, Ethereum is only up about 400% against Bitcoin. So it's a completely different game today, right? It's the gains are slower. But one of the nice things about having a slower, more methodical move up is you're, you're less prone to the same downside risk that you would have seen last cycle. When it went up too quickly, the market could not bear it. And then it came down extremely quickly. I mean, Ethereum's uh, we, we've definitely bled against Bitcoin, you know, 40 percent or so on, on on various occasions. But it hasn't been an 80 percent drop like we saw happen two separate times during the last cycle. And of course, once we got to the to this final local top here, we then bled another 86 percent. So you could argue three times in that one cycle we saw Ethereum's valuation against Bitcoin bleed 80 percent or more. But this cycle, what do we notice? It's just a long game, right? A long, slow, methodical move up. We haven't had that major push to the upside. OK, by the way, if you're curious, I mean, if we were to make it there to the I mean, the, the, the bounds on this currently range from 0.045 to 0.17. OK, 0.17 is <laughs> that's a long ways off from where we currently are. Right. And you're talking about another 2x or so on the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation, which would be impressive considering that we're, that would be flipping territory. So. Look, I, I, I'm not saying we necessarily have to go back up to those levels. But what I am saying is right now we're sort of in the middle of the road. OK, if you take a measure move from here to get to where we currently are, it's about an 86 percent move to the upside. And then from here to up here is also about 100 percent move to the upside. So Ethereum's valuation against Bitcoin, I would say arguably it's in the middle of the road. There's not I, I wouldn't say it's an obvious top or an obvious bottom. But that's basically how it's been the entire cycle, right? We've just been sort of in these bounds, not seeing any crazy parabolic rallies to the upside, but also not seeing any catastrophic drops to the downside either. So for me, this is the best case scenario for Ethereum. 
a slower move up against the US dollar, a slower move up against Bitcoin, and, um, and then hopefully we don't have to see those, those much larger corrections that we've seen in prior cycles. If you guys like the content, remember we do have the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. You will get access to weekly reports and videos, the Telegram alerts channel, the Telegram chat room, the risk dashboard, and more. So make sure you check it out intothecryptoverse.com. At the very least, subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon to turn on notifications, and I will see you next time. Bye.